Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have the same situations we did in the previous video, but now we're going to take a closer look at the analysis of that particular circuit, the RC step function. So we have a DC voltage source, a resistor, a capacitor, and a switch that closes at time equals zero. We're trying to find an equation that describes the voltage across capacitor as a function of time from time equals zero onward, and we're going to assume that at time equals zero, the voltage across capacitor will be some initial voltage that is smaller than the voltage across the source. We're going to use Kirchhoff's rule to determine how to come up with that equation. We're going to take a point on the circuit right there, and we're going to say that the current flowing into that point equals the current leaving that point. Normally, we use that for a branch, but here, just taking a single point on the circuit will work as well. So we can say that the current in must equal the current out, and the current in is equal to the current across the resistor. The current using Ohm's law says that the voltage drop across the resistor divided by the resistance will give us the current. If the voltage here is greater than the voltage over here, and so after the switch closes, we assume that V sub S will be greater than the voltage as a function of time. We take that difference divided by the resistance, which is current I1. So that's where we have the voltage of the source minus the voltage across the capacitor divided by the resistance as the current into that point. And then the voltage leaving that point is this, the current leaving that point is the same as the current entering the capacitor. And that current is, this, is determined by the size of the capacitance times the change in the voltage with respect to time. The greater the capacitance, the faster current can flow into it. And the faster the voltage is changing across the capacitor, the faster the current must be flowing in there as well. So it's simply the product of those two. So now we're going to try to determine voltage as a function of time by separating the variables. So what we're going to do is we're going to, let's see here, bring the dt over there. And let's do that. Yeah, so we have dt divided by rc. So we bring the c down there, the dt there is equal to dv divided by v sub s minus v. Now we're going to switch the equation around. We want the dv on the left side, and we're going to multiply both sides by a negative 1 because we want to write this as v minus v sub s. So bring it to the other side. We have a minus. Nope, let's see here. No, we'll leave that alone. We'll write it as dv divided by v minus v sub s, so that's essentially multiplying this times a negative 1, is equal to minus dt divided by rc. And now we're able to take the integral of both sides, so we're going to integrate the left side, and we're going to integrate that from v initial to v across capacitor. We can integrate the left side here, and we're going to integrate that from 0 to t. All right, on the left side, that gives us the natural log of V, or the natural log of the denominator. So we have the natural log of V minus V sub S, and we integrate that from V sub naught to V, and that is equal to negative 1 over RC times T evaluated from 0 to T. Here you can see when plugging the lower limit, we get nothing. Plug in the upper limit, we get t, so this will be the right side. And on the left side, well, let's go ahead and see what we get. So when we plug in v up here, we get the natural log of v minus v sub s minus the natural log of, now we plug in the lower limit, we get v sub o minus v sub s. Okay, and on the right side, we get minus 1 over rc times t. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to write this as a single expression because it's the natural log of A minus the natural log of B is the natural log of A over B. So let's come up here. And so here we can write that the natural log of, that would be V minus V sub S divided by V sub O minus V sub S is equal to minus 1 over RC. Why do I have RS there? Hmm, that's strange. I should not have a S there. I should have a C there. RC, not RS. So that would be RC times T. The next thing we want to do is take the antilog of both sides. So when we do that, we get 
V minus V sub S divided by V sub naught minus V sub S is equal to E to the minus T over RC, where RC, of course, is the time constant. And then we can cross multiply, so we get V minus V sub S is equal to the quantity, the initial voltage across the capacitor minus V across the source times E to the minus T over RC. And finally, by moving this across, knowing this is the voltage as a function of time, so the voltage as a function of time is equal to V sub S plus the quantity V sub O minus V sub S times E to the minus T over RC. And so here we now have an expression for the voltage across capacitor when we have what we call an RC step function. If we were to graph that function, it will look like this. Here we have the voltage as a function of time. We had the initial voltage, V sub O, across capacitor. This here will be the voltage across the source. And we can see that over time, the voltage across capacitor will, in the limit, after five time constants, or more than five time constants, reach the voltage of the source. And then current will essentially stop flowing through the circuit. And that's the equation that describes that particular function right here. That's how it's done.